Hey everyone, Fear Crawler here. Welcome to the video. Mini Crawler and I were just about to bury this time capsule here and we. See you later, suckers. Was that one of the neighbor kids again? You and I are gonna have a serious talk when this video is over, mister. <sighs> Enjoy the video. October 2nd. It's been four days since the incident with the dismemberment of the thing. I'm slowly starting to wonder if I'm going insane after the story I heard from Hal when we got back to his place that night. Hal eased himself into a chair at the kitchen table and pulled a joint from his shirt pocket. He adjusted himself and lit a match, bringing the joint to his lips while he inhaled it. Gall set about making a pot of coffee, and after he brought it to the table with mugs and poured one for each of us, Hal spoke up. So I'll be guessing. You'll be wanting to know about what you saw out there. Am I right? Unable to speak, I nodded my head. I'm gonna take a guess. You know that was a zombie like in the movies. Again, I simply nodded, feeling my throat get very tight and my mouth very dry. See, Will, I'm gonna tell you why you saw that. He took a long drag from his joint. The smoke exhaled from his nose like a dragon. About 34 years ago, there's a man called Richard Raspail. Lived here in Darkwood. He, uh, ran a church. As he said church, he made quotation signs in the air. He preached about things, about the coming of some beast he called Dragon God. Claimed it would bring about the resurrection of the ancients, as he called them. Spirits of darkness that would rule over the world and destroy anyone who dared oppose them. He paused to take a swig of his coffee, the smell of which along with the weed now permeated the air of the room. He started charming some of the local women into his little cult. Began to try to have one of them give birth to this monster he worshipped. Eventually, a of the fathers and husbands of the women he brainwashed decided they had enough of his garbage. They armed themselves and broke down the doors of his mansion with the intention of tarring and feathering him before they were going to chase him out of Darkwood. But when they entered his house, they found a horror show inside. There were women with their stomachs ripped open and deformed fetuses and jaws, and other women still pregnant with more unholy spawn. The walls had young boys and women hanging by their wrists with their innards spilling out on the ground, and yet they didn't die. Some stayed to pull everyone who wouldn't dead out of that godforsaken hell, but the women we kept fighting it, saying they were there to serve their master in any way he saw fit. Some even tried attacking, but eventually, everyone was pulled out. Once their place was cleared, the men descended into the basement where the court had its ceremonies. It was dark, but for the green flames from candles in a pit with a giant bonfire that glowed. Standing over the flames was Raspberry with his face painted with some strange runes and blood. As far as they tried to kill the mob, screaming, blood for flames, blood for God. But they were all shot dead. At the last one died, Raspel looked at the man who had come to try to kill him and sneered before growling in a voice no human could have made. How dare you disrupt my magic? Hal paused, shaking his head. I was a little younger than you at that time. I knew it was real magic, not just hoodoo by a crazy man. He drank his coffee down and Gall poured him another mug. I grew up in New Orleans, and I saw a real voodoo man call up Papa Legba and Baron Samedi in the lock. His eyes suddenly went dark, and his lips twisted into a tight frown. Well, this was different. Way more dark and way more evil than any of the witch doctors I ever saw. He took a shaky breath and then continued. All of a sudden, it was like the shadows came alive and grabbed all of us as he fled the mansion. 
heading for the graveyard. Somehow we managed to all break free of whatever was holding us and followed. We caught him on top of the big hill, a stone's throw from where we were sitting. I turned and looked at said hill through the window. I had a feeling I knew what was about to be told of what happened to Richard Raspail. A man, Jared Smith, locked his arm around Raspail's neck and brought a knife up to it. Raspail quit struggling and snarled at Jared. Go ahead, Smith. See what happens. Well, that was all the encouragement Smith needed. He got into Raspail's neck so hard and so fast that he took his head clean off. Hal paused and looked down at his mug of coffee, lost in his memory. Hal, I croaked. He looked up at me, seeming very tired. What happened next? I was very afraid to find out, but I felt I had to know. Hal sighed and continued. We let his body and head fall to the ground. His head rolling to the bottom of the hill. Just as we were about to rejoice at the death of the warlock, something horrible happened. Hal swallowed hard before continuing. All of a sudden, a massive gust of blood come pouring out his neck much more than any human should have in their body. It flowed for almost 15 minutes before it stopping. By that time, it had the entire ground of the cemetery hosed down in blood. Once it was finished, we began to wonder what to do with his body and his house from hell. Suddenly, an old man named Jim Harker said, Burn it! And all the evil things inside with it. Well, that sounded pretty good to us, so we hauled his body back to his house and threw his body and head inside and filled with oil and dry dead wood before setting all ablaze. At first we all felt relieved, but before we could begin to celebrate, all of a sudden... Hal started to shake violently before he continued. All of a sudden, a massive form like the upper body of a man took form in the flames. Turned them green. The thing spoke to us in the same voice we heard Raspail speaking earlier. You have killed me. You ruined my plans. So the last of my magics, I place a curse on all you. From now on the land where my blood was spilled shall be cursed, and the dead shall rise from their graves to wreak my vengeance upon you all. And with a final roar, Team vanished along with the flames. All of a sudden, a loud crack of thunder pierced the air, and the heaviest rain any of us had ever seen descended on us. We all ran for cover, and when we went back the next morning, when the rain had finally stopped, there was not even any ashes, just a great big crater in the earth. Hal groaned tiredly. And like it said after that night, when the sun went down, the dead would walk. Not often, and not many at a time, but as you can tell from Gaul, he gestured to the scarred behemoth. They are plenty dangerous. So from then on, men from that group began to act as caretakers of the cemetery to make sure the dead stay where they belong. I'm the last of the group left. And when I'm gone, It'll be up to the two of you and any other we get to make sure they stay dead and that people in town don't find out about it. He yawned. And now if y'all will excuse me, I'm off to bed. He rose and handed me his pistol. This one's yours now, Will. Now that you know that we make a living by killing the dead. He headed off into another room, which is where I assume he sleeps. But before closing his door, he said, Ain't pretty, but we just gotta do it. Gall and I left after placing the mugs in the sink. As we left the porch, Gall pointed to my house and made a shooing gesture with his hand. I nodded shakingly and headed back to my house. Once I got in, I locked and bolted the door and pushed a table in front of it before locking all the windows. I got dressed for bed even though the sun was almost up and went to lay down. 
right before I fell asleep, I thought, God in heaven, what have I gotten myself into? Yeah, I know you gave him five bucks, but you can't go burying people alive and uh, oh wait, we're back. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Until next time, everyone take care, be safe, and above all, stay, stay scared. Stay scared. <laughs>